hello everyone good to see you here again today before that i call myself mr us patil working as assistant professor at sharat institute of technology college of engineering adra icharkaji which is at kolapur district maharashtra as we had gone through introduction about robotics so today in this video we'll go through the configuration of a robot here before going to a configuration of robots we are we already have gone through some basic or uh, brief introduction about robots so where now we are going to take the first point as a configurations of <coughs> industrial robots yes so here we'll see the robot configurations some of the commonly used configurations in the robotics here the cartesian or rectangular giant tree or 3p actually there are five basic configurations of commercial industrial robots and in that uh, this is one one <coughs> one is that cartesian coordinate configuration uh, these robots are made of uh, three linear joints three linear joints this is x direction y direction and z direction right so three linear joints uh, that orients the end effectors which are usually followed by additional revolute joints right this is what we call cartesian coordinate system where this has two possible configura configurations with uh, that is what x y and z or you can say y z x it is composed of the three sliding joints two of which are orthogonal and this is we can see in this figure yes this is what the cartesian or rectangular cantry configuration right or <coughs> coordination cartesian coordinate configuration and if you go through second one cartesian robot works envelope if you see here this is transfer stroke this would be a transfer stroke from here to here if you see on top you it would be from here to here and this if you see the particular proper uh, in the side view this would be from here to here you, you can just say that horizontal reach from here to here it would be reach this hatching line is the operation line similarly here from here to here it would be a vertical line this is what vertical stroke here is horizontal stroke from here to here and this is horizontal stroke you can as you see here right and here is vertical stroke from here to here right and if you see the robot configuration continued that cylindrical second configuration is cylindrical we can say rp2 r2p the cylindrical coordinates robots have two prismatic joints and one revolute revolute joint one revolute joint and one prismatic joint this is called a uh, cylindrical configurations right so here we can see the possibilities of this configurations include this t l and o or v vertical <coughs> v sorry l v and l l v and l joints 
this robot configuration consists of vertical column relative to which the arm assembly can be moved up and down this is up moved up and down the end of the arm the end of the arm can be moved in and out relative to the axis of the column isn't it so this is what are cylindrical configurations if you see the silicon cylindrical robot work envelope if you see top view so this is the area where it can be swing we can't can say that can be swing up to in this area that is called horizontal stroke up from here to here if you see here this would be as we have <coughs> seen before this is vertical stroke and this is even horizontal stroke from here to here the motion from here to here this is what machined portion horizontal as well as vertical if you see another configuration that is a robot configuration that continued that is spherical joint this is what a spherical a polar configuration or spherical joint you can say this here you can say the configuration has trl that is t r and l this is revolution and <coughs> t is rotate uh, this is transverse and this is rotational and this is longitudinal right length or you can say just rotational giving a notation like this and if you see the notation including that tlo tlo lo center or sorry trl t r and l joints a sliding arm l the sliding arm l is actuated to the body which can rotate about the axis which can be rotated about the axis of this t joint isn't it and horizontal axis of r joint this is you can see in this figure this is what one practically or how it would be right this is what a figure this is what polar configurations or robot configurations are in that is spherical joint you can say if you see that spherical robot a work envelope is like this from this is a horizontal stroke and for this is envelope so maximum vertical stroke and this is up to reach up to here it would be reach and this would be from here to here it can be machined that is horizontal reach and this is horizontal reach and similarly if you see the robot configuration continued next one is articulated or anthropomorphic configurations or you can even uh, say that jointed arm configuration robot this is jointed arm configuration of robot jointed arms similarly see jointed arm you can say even jointed r so this configuration has trr or vvr joints this robot has the general configurations of human arm general configurations of human arm uh, it arm its arm has shoulder joint isn't it the arm has shoulder joint and the elbow and elbow joint and arm can be swelled about the base swelled about the base this is what jointed arm configuration of robot or you can say articulated or anthropomorphic 3r similarly this is a work envelope for the sorry <coughs> and next one is and last one is you can say scara configuration you can say this a scara configuration or c cross scara configuration of selective complaint assembly robot r and they are have two revolution joints that are parallel and allow the robot to move in a horizontal plane 
plus an additional prismatic joint of the move vertically yes so here scara is an abbreviation for selective complaints assembly robot arm uh, this permits uh, the robot to perform insertion tasks uh, for example assembly while doing assembly fast assembly so it would be used in a vertical direction where some side to side adjustment may be needed to mate the two parts properly and the scara configuration has vro joints and uh, this scara is unique in that it typically does not have a separate wrist assembly it won't have separate wrist assembly isn't it so the insertion is made from this accordingly uh, orientation requirements are minimal and the wrist is therefore not needed here and you can see here even the figure even right <clears throat> so this is what the configuration of robots this is what Cartesian as I told first one second one cylindrical like this movements here here a spherical swelling here spherical kind of and then it's articulated and last one is a scara right so here these are the some configurations if you see references frames world reference frame which is universal coordinate frame as defined by x y z axis isn't it in this case the joints of the robots move simultaneously so as to create motions along the three major axis that is x y z the joint reference frame which is used to specify movements of each individual joints of robot and in this case each joint may be accessed individually and thus only one joint moves at a time as we have see here only one can use and next is sorry the tool reference frame which specifies the movements of the robots hand relative to the frame attached to the hand the x y and z uh, x z y z and z dash axis attached to the hand define the motions of the hand related to this local frame all joints of the robots move simultaneously to create coordinate motions about the tool frame this is what uh, we can say in the scala or oh, sorry this is you can say in the scala all are movement motions over there and if you see here robot reference frames are i said that world reference frame this is what old reference said this is x y z and this is x axis y axis and z axis and here the joint reference frame these are the joint x y and this is z the rotation over here and this is a final total reference frame means everywhere it would be motion the x y and z these are the some reference frames and if you talking about if you work envelope concept depending on the configurations and size of the link and wrist joint robot can reach a collection of points called workspace hmm? whatever workspace required that would be you can make that size and the link of the wrist joints the alternatively the workshop may be found empirically by moving each joints uh, through its range of the motions and combining all space it can reach the subtracting what spaces cannot reach isn't it right and if you see here pure spherical jointed arm work envelope this is what a swing and this is what envelope figure that is horizontal view and the same horizontal this is vertical this is top view and this is side view isn't it and here similarly if you see this parallelogram joint this is a side view and this is again top view and if you are talking about wrist 
there would be a three degree of freedom roll involves rotating the wrist about the arm axis where pitch up and down rotation of the wrist and yaw is left right rotation of the wrist and that end efforts is mounted on the wrist itself if you see this wrist motion as we are saying this is roll this is rolling throughout this <coughs> part right this is what rolling you can say roll involve the rotating wrist about the arm axis about this arm axis right next is we can say pitch and this is a pitch so you can rotate even like this as well along the up down rotation for the wrist and yo is left right rotation of the wrist yo is this is left or this is right rotation of the <coughs> wrist and then if is mounted on the wrist this is so attached to the robot arm so this is what wrist motion about and if you see about control methods if you want to control all these wrist and all joints nano serve controls are there so implemented by setting limits or mechanical stops for each joint and sequencing the actuations for each joint to accomplish the cycle it might be end point robot limited sequence robot and bang bang robot and no control over the motion at the intermediate points only end points are known actually programming and accomplished by if this could be done by programming and that programming has to be setting desired sequence of moves that would be programming accomplished by this setting a like desired sequence of moves even adjusting end stops for each axis accordingly and the sequence of moves is controlled by a sequencer which uses feedback received from the end stop to the index to next step in the program even though you can say low cost and easy maintain reliable relatively high speed responsibility of 0.01 inch limited flexibility typical hydraulic pneuma pneumatic drives these are all the <coughs> control methods servo controls this is one point again a control method that is point to point control a continuous path control and closed loop control used to monitor position or velocity or other variables of each joints this is what servo servo controls where point to point control only the end post points are programmed the path used to connect the end points are computed by the controller and user can control velocity and may permit linear or piece wise linear motion and feedback control is used to during motion to certain that individual joint have achieved some desired location indeed where where often used to hydraulic drive even and recent trends towards the servo motors isn't it now we are using many more over there servo motors are using and loads up to 500 lb and large reach you can up to reach over there if you see application of that a robots or a configuration of this you can pick and place type operations can easily operate uh, palletizing a uh, machine loading something if you see about continuous path controlled uh, in addition to the control over the end points the paths taken by the end effector can be controlled and path is controlled by manipulating the joints throughout the entire motion via closed loop control if this is continue path control and we as we have that is uh, <coughs> this is point to point control method 
and if you see about continuous path control it would be in addition that control over the endpoints and where endpoints if you put some entire motions it, it should be a closed loop control so if application is spray painting polishing grinding arc welding you can these are the examples where continuous path controlled robots right that configurations so continuously it would be do these kind of appli <coughs> applications or use in you know, this applications that are these are spray painting polish and etc and this is what uh, some brief uh, explanation about uh, configurations of robots and next uh, in the next video we will see the links and joints of the particular robots thank you